Look, I'm not gonna tell you how hard it is to get a job in data science and analytics. Everyone knows that it's competitive at the entry level, and instead I'm gonna show you how to get a job anyway by building the perfect portfolio. We'll take a look at 10 data portfolios from real data professionals, so forget theory, everything in this video actually works, and we'll look at real portfolios. We'll start with some GitHub portfolios, which are simple and very easy to set up, and then we'll cover some personal portfolios, meaning on your own website. And these take more time, but they give way better payoffs as well. And I'll show you examples of a third way to make a data science portfolio, which is the fastest and easiest way out of all of these ways, while also making a wonderful job ready portfolio. And this video could be a Udemy course, but I'll show you everything for free in this quick video. So let's begin. This video is going to be a bit unscripted because I want to explore the portfolios with you. So this is our first example and shout out to Katie here. This is how her profile looks on GitHub and you can see on the side, it's the name, it's a quick description as well as you know followers and things like that location company uh, links etc and now on the overview section you'll see a basic readme document which includes a quick banner a little text about herself some of the things that she focuses on doing as well as a link to her actual portfolio with her projects and how to contact her as well as hire her directly on upwork which shows that she's probably working as a freelancer as well and that's why she's focusing so much on contact and that presence now you can see that there are a couple of projects that she's actually pinned which you can go ahead and look at if you want to but what we're going to do is we're going to click on her projects and you can see now we're being sent over to her actual portfolio that she's created and she's focusing more on data engineering it seems but there's a table of contents a quick description here are some of her projects we can scroll down here now obviously when you're getting started you're not going to have as many projects as katie she's pretty advanced but it's still a good thing to look at she's also done some guides and other resources that she's including it's a perfect time to include that at the end all right so the next one is tanika and she's a global analytics and agile leader and you can see that she lists her certifications her tools some of her awards and a quick description as well as the basic things on the side here and you can see some of her pin projects right here which we can go ahead and click on for example budget highlights which seems to be a Jupyter notebook and a public one and you can see that she includes a readme file as well as some more project files which we can also click on and get some more information and she's including a lot of the information on how to start this and how to actually go through the entire process if you want to recreate the project and kind of learn from it to get an idea of what you can create even with just a simple github page or a readme file because it does look much more like a portfolio than you would expect on github and so the next one is going to be chloe who's a product data analyst you can see some information here as well as some of the pin projects now these ones for example if you want to click on this you would click on the twitter tv show sentiment analysis which is a public project and this one is going to be much better for us to analyze and learn from. So you can see that there's a quick readme file, which just includes the project history and overview. And if we scroll down here, we'll get some information about what was happening, some highlights of the project. And she's been analyzing a TV show that she likes and then analyzing the sentiment in that TV show. And it's one that involves a lot of drama and things like that. And over here, you can see all the resources that she's used to create the project. You can click on this file, for example, to see some actual information about the data set and the contestants. You can also see an R file as well as another R file that she's uploaded to GitHub. Now we're going to move on to some more personal portfolios on a separate website. And these ones are going to be more unique and interesting, but they're also harder to create simply because it's more customizable and there's also more things that you can do wrong when it's more customizable. Either way, this is a fantastic portfolio by Hannah. And of course, she has way more projects than somebody starting out would have, but it's still a very interesting thing to take a look at. If we go up here, for example, we can see happiness by region made in Tableau 2017 we can click on the project or we can get more information about a project which she's actually decided to upload to medium that's another option and she's written like a full article about this which you can then go through you can see what she's created their findings and things like that now for her other projects you can select on the category because she has so many projects that you have to kind of select between a different category so the way that she's kind of doing it is she has this main website and then she links out to her medium articles perhaps some other option but generally speaking it seems to be medium articles where she has the full kind of project step by step with some more information about it and this is definitely a way that you could do it as well so she's kind of starting with this foundation and then linking out to some more full articles about her project now what she also does is that if you do want to look at the full code she's sending you to her github page so she's kind of making it a little bit more complicated uh, to go to her github but she's probably doing it for some good reason and i mean she's focusing more on the writing aspect and that could probably be 
very advantageous for her as well. The next one I'm going to show you is a portfolio from Marco, who's a PhD. So obviously some things are not going to be relevant for us and most things aren't, but there's still some valuable lessons that we can get from this portfolio. So you can see that it's a separate portfolio that's hosted on Squarespace. And he has a lot of different things like papers and things like that, that most people aren't going to have. But he also has a portfolio section focusing on projects. And you can see that the pictures that he has are very good. They're interesting. He keeps the titles pretty interesting. For example, painter identification with combo something. And then you click and you get more information about this full project on his GitHub page with a lot of information about this project. And here he gives you kind of a goal. He gives you an overview. He gives you some information about this. And then of course, also in these folders, he includes more information. If you want to go in and look on that, you can see everything from the scripts to the notebooks to the resources that he used to create this. And you can also take a look at here to get more information about this. So even though it's a pretty complicated thing, he's made it very organized and easy to access for somebody that's interested in learning more about it. Now do be aware of his very advanced level, and he's not really looking for an entry level job or something like that. So I just really really want to emphasize this. If you're doing that, you have to adapt it. The next portfolio I'm going to show you is from Katie, who is focusing on geographic data science. And she has a portfolio slash like a freelance website with a lot of information about her as well. And you can see some of her main projects right here. She has plenty of projects available. And for example, here you could see a project that she's created about the Ohio precincts. So let's click on that and we can see more information on her GitHub as well as a quick summary over here. If we do go to the GitHub page, you'll see a lot of different files. It's a pretty comprehensive project. It's not something that started just really quickly, but you can see a readme file. It's very structured, very nicely organized as well as a kind of overview here. If you go to the readme file, you can information, some notes, some changes and things like that. As of now, we're going to move to a site called data science portfolio.io and it's a free site. I'm not affiliated with them in any way whatsoever, but I want to include it because it's a good way to get kind of a templated view of what the data science portfolios can look like, as well as a pretty easy way to create it. Now, is it a perfect website for everyone? Definitely not. And I still think that you should have your own portfolio, but it's a pretty nice way of learning and seeing how it works. And so I've kind of picked out some portfolios at random and we're just going to analyze them. And so the first one is Brianna, who's a data scientist. And you can read some information about her on the side here. You can see the skills and these ones are much more optimized for jobs. They're going to be better for a recruiter because it's very clear what skills you know. It's very clear like what you've used projects rather than the previous portfolios that we looked at that were more customized, but also less clear on how they're actually supposed to help the company. So we can see a lot of the projects and just like a quick description, a title, as well as an image, both to attract attention, but also to kind of visualize what the project is about. For example, here, she's actually taken like some visualization from the project itself. We can click on this one, domesticated animal image classification with Python, and we can see a project link to GitHub as well as the skills and just the overall summary that we talked about. But the full information is going to be hosted on another platform, just like when you're doing your personal portfolio on a website, you would still keep the actual information on GitHub or Kaggle or something like that, and then kind of summarize it on your own profile, which is like your front page your front portfolio and then if they do want to go ahead and look at it deeper they would click here go on the link and then take a look the next one i'm going to show you is meridad who's a data analyst and he has a basic description some contact options as well as his skills over here and he's done a pretty good job of these ones. They do look very interesting. And he also put his experience here, which you can also add to this profile, as well as education. And if you do click on one, you would see the basics of the project. And just like here, he's also sending you to another page, which is on GitHub, for example, here for the full code. Or you could go to Medium and probably read his article about this one that he's created, similar to one of the previous ones that we looked at, which is pretty cool that he's turning it into multiple things. He's both turning the project into a GitHub folder, he's turning it into a Medium article, he's uploading it here. That's just going to make it more visible and uh, give him more opportunities to show his skills, which is pretty cool as well. And the next one I'm going to show you is Fialami, who's a data scientist and machine learning engineer. And he's done a very good job of his portfolio as well. And you can see here some basic skills that he's included, as well as an about section. And he's done including a lot of different projects here. Now, obviously more projects than you would have when you start, but what you do, just click on the project, for example, here, go to his GitHub for the full information, and a brief summary over here, a very nicely done. If somebody's really interested, they're just going to go to the GitHub page and read all the information about the project like this, which is put on GitHub. And the next one is going to be Tiago, who's a data engineer, and he has a description, his core data science skills, as well as just the projects on the side. And if you want to click on them, you can see there's some skills here, some information about the project, and then of course the GitHub profile as well, which you can go ahead and look at with a README and more information about the project itself. Very interesting. Now, 
one thing that's really important when you do create your portfolio is that you focus on the key skills because you can add a lot of different skills and a lot of projects, right? But you don't want to add a lot of skills that aren't exactly relevant to the thing that you're applying for. You might have more skills, but it doesn't mean that you should include them because that's going to take away attention from the key skills that are the most important that you also have, make you seem like a generalist that's not entirely focused on data jobs. And so that is pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from these 10 portfolios that we took a look at. And I'll see you in the next one. And also check out the next video somewhere on the screen right here because the YouTube algorithm thinks that you would like it. So why not?